Hey everyone, Jason here. No fancy name, just Jason. Anyways, I picked up a Fogger V4 from Canvape this weekend. It's Tuesday now, so it's been sitting around. I've been kind of waiting to do the video. Anyways, it comes in this box, just like the... I even have a V2 box. Pretty much identical. It's going to do a bit of a comparison, but there's really not a whole lot to see between the two of them. It is slightly bigger, not a whole lot. So, anyways, stainless steel, glass tank, dual coil compared to the single coil of the other one. The single coil of this, of uh, the V2, is kind of a more of a pain to wick. Well, to get the wick going properly, but when you get the hang of it, it's good. Anyways, we're talking about the V4 today. So. Yeah, it comes with the box, comes with some bag of spare stuff. Comes with a keychain screwdriver, which I actually haven't got one of these before with any of my rebuildables. Usually it comes with these little blue ones. So, anyways, on to it. It just kind of comes apart and unscrews. This is already the drip tip on top, which I probably will never use. So take that ah, top cap off. It has a glass tube, which is actually fairly thin compared to a lot of other tanks that I've had anyways. Then you have the chimney. It says Fogger on it. That's pretty fancy. Anyways, that just unscrews off. I've already actually got coils in there. Anyways, onto the chimney, which for some reason doesn't want to come apart. I don't know. Oh, there we go. The chimney actually is two pieces. Most of you will already know this, but let's take it apart anyways. Anyways, yeah, I've got my coils in there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I decided to go with 28 gauge. No, 32 gauge. I always use 28 gauge. Just because, I don't know, I've had it around. I never use it. I figure since I'm doing about, I did about eight wraps on each, and the 28, if you're going for around one ohm, which is usually what I wrap it on, the coils are going to be fairly wide. This way, if you can see, the uh, with eight wraps of the 32 gauge, it's pretty much right over, it covers the whole air, so airflow holes. So the airflow is like directly hitting the whole coil, so I figured I'd try that first and see how it goes. Anyways, there's another little sleeve that I just took off. It just goes on the bottom. You can take it off. Just almost. And then you have the airflow screw here. Just screws up and down to adjust the airflow. And this is one solid piece of metal compared to a lot of the other tanks and rebuildables I have. Like this is solid. Just one solid piece of metal. They just machined it out, drilled some holes like the airflow. Basically it goes in and down so that just connects right there so there's really even if it floods there's not a whole lot of place for it to get trapped underneath of it like a lot of the other ones and I should talk a little bit about if I can get this back on the copper contact pin on the bottom a lot of people say it's more conductive if I can get this on there we go okay anyways yeah you got the, yeah, there's a fill hole and the copper contact pin. Anyways, if you can see on the top, the positive block, right on this side, you can take that off, but you can see I take out, there's a little rubber O-ring underneath of it, try not to lose that. I think it comes with extras anyways. When you take out the copper pin, underneath of it, if you can see that, is, an, is a you use a flat headed screwdriver and then you unscrew that and it loosens up the positive block there but you know what even if it's off center the positive block the way it's set up here it's got like a little metal pin that goes in it's stuck that's the way it's always going to be even if you loosen it you can't adjust it so there's really not much point but I mean you can if you want I tried until I found out I couldn't adjust it I like things to be a little more centered than Drives me a little crazy if they're not, so I'll try to ignore it anyways. And 
I haven't even used this yet, and I was looking forward to this, and I've just been waiting for the video. So, hopefully the video won't be too boring. Anyways, put that back on. Which, the only reason I take that off, take that off if, is if you want to clean the valve threads, I guess. I've cleaned all this out ahead of time, so yeah, I just do micro coils and cotton wick. So I've read some places or some people they a lot of people are actually posting that they put the wick into the channels, which I have never done myself. I've been a little close to the camera now too. See how this turns out when I look at it after. Anyways. Yeah, they put them in the juice channels, and I have never done that with any of mine. Like my K funds, my Fogger V2. I just don't seem to like it. It just doesn't work as well. And I can't even get a wick into a coil. There we go. So, what I do is I just lightly put it on top, kind of do it like I do my K funds which I'll show you a bit when it's done. I was going to wick this, but it'd be a... You wouldn't be able to see it as well after I had it all set up. Coils were in the way a little bit, but... Anyways, when you're doing the coils also, I should say, the easiest way i found to do it... I don't do dual coils very often at all, so if this is ugly, cool. I don't care. The only dual coils I really did very often was on a Trident. And they have slotted posts, so they just go right in. This one's got the screws. You just, I do a full wrap around and then kind of stick the extra wire out to the sides. And then I wrap the other one on top of that. Full wrap around, stick the wires out to the side, and then tighten it down. And it seemed to actually hold in pretty good. And... So I got way too much wick, but that's kind of what it's like. And if I show you the juice channels at the side, two on each side, they actually look decent. And well, I got way too much wick. I actually forgot my scissors. Oh, one thing I do do when I wrap my coils, when I do my micro coils, most of the time for my K-Funds, my foggers, I use the little screwdrivers that come with a lot of these rebuildables. Well, apparently now they're coming with the keychain ones, and they're way too small. Anyways, I wrap my coils around these, and it seems to be about the perfect width for me. Anyways, what I what works for me. Now I'm just cutting these off so I can uh, put them into the chimney a little easier, because that's a lot of wick. Yeah, so dual coils really I haven't enjoyed up until hopefully now. Anyways, just put your wicks up. Screw it down. Sorry if this is a little boring. A lot of people already know what to do. This is kind of a review, kind of a quick setup. I, co I didn't want to bore you with me coiling. I didn't even know how that would turn out while I was doing it anyways. Anyways, so... I think the best thing, you just cut the wicks off right about the top of the chimney. That should be enough wick, I'd imagine. Other things I'd like, actually, I don't know. Anyways, it's a little above, but not a big deal. I probably should have fluffed those wicks up a little more. So it'd be covering it up a little better. As long as it seals, it really shouldn't have a problem leaking. I just get one of my little screwdrivers for... Hobbies, or for whatever I have them for. Anyway, so I'm just pressing the cotton down lightly and hoping I know where the channels are. I mean, it could probably work as a K phone where you don't really have to cover the channels. I don't even know how far they're down this goes. It feels really like it's not down far enough. This is my first time doing this one, so. We'll see how it goes. Hmm. Yeah. 
You know, if this doesn't work out, no one's going to see this video anyways. I'm still sitting way too close. Just get used to sitting back. I don't do videos at all. I keep thinking that I'd like to. I just never get around to it. Anyways, I'm just kind of lightly packing them all down. I don't know. See that hardly? Just it's kind of just all wick in here, and it feels really tight in here. Like it just feels like I've, I'm afraid I packed it too tight, and it's gonna not wick very well. And also just, anyways, I t saw a video. Gordon said the cinnamon Danish. I told myself I would never. <laughs> vape cinnamon danish because if you ever know that eating a spoonful of cinnamon uh, dare or whatever so I saw a thing on the news that said cinnamon actually it will scar your lungs when you do that and then reading about how cinnamon is a tank cracker I figured the juice may not be a whole lot better for you but you know what I broke down and got some cinnamon danish. Gordon said it was decent. I tried it in uh, Pro Tank 2 because I also picked up the Aerobase on the weekend and I decided to try that out so I put it in there. But the problem is this is 6 milligram. When I was using Clearos I was vaping 12 milligrams. I'm just going to saturate the wicks and so for Clearos I actually need for a more of a throat hit, I kind of need 12 milligrams. The 6 milligram felt pretty much like air because I'm just, I vape it in my K funds and foggers. I don't use my drippers as much, but I used to. I'm um, just getting these saturated. I'm probably going to oversaturate them a bit. I have a feeling, you know what? I I think I might have a problem. Well, I just was thinking about the airflow situation, so I want to make sure that the wicks are kind of. Let's the airflow go through. So it's not really a problem, I was just adjusting it a little bit. Normally, I try to put my wicks in, then saturate them, and then don't touch them after that. Well, I'm kind of do that. I got used to it for my fogger because kind of when you pack the cotton against the sides of it, it's easy to lightly pack it. Some Danish smells good. Um, what am I saying? Oh, you got to lightly pack it against the sides of the fogger V2. I don't put it through them. A lot of people put them through it. It didn't work for me, so I tried it the other way when I saw someone else do it, and it works good. Drink a lot of Mountain Dew. If I do any more videos, which who knows if I'll do it, I'll be drinking that all the time. Probably not that one, but. So. Hopefully this works. Hopefully I don't have to make another video. Or edit. Learn how to edit. Anyways, this is going up at 1.05 oh, ohms, which I hope it looks backwards on my video camera screen, but hopefully it doesn't to you. I already knew it was that. I tested it when I made it yesterday or the day before. So after that, you just put the chimney on. I'm actually going to fire it before I put that on and see how it goes. Alright, so I've got that on my Nemesis. It's got a freshly charged 18650. I should see what it looks like. Okay. Smells good. I don't know how well this is working, mind you, but you may never see this video. I should stop saying that in case you do see this video. And I'm trying not to drag this on too long. If we can speed this up, it'd be great. That's really airy. Tastes good though. I hate to find out I didn't saturate this enough, so I'm going to put a little bit more on. Didn't flood whatsoever, so it's not too bad. A little bit more. 
And I won't even worry about it. There. All right. So let me put the top part of the chimney back on. How long is this going on for? 15 minutes. Holy crap. This is not how long I want it to go. Anyways, put that back on. Glass. I like the Fogger V2 because you could just fill it through there, but this is so loose I wouldn't even dare try that. And, yep, screw the it back together, just threads on. I'm going to do it reasonably tight. I should take it off my Nemesis. Oh, the Nemesis, you can also, CanVape got those in. I think they're about 35 bucks, about the same price as the V4. So... Take the bottom fill screw out. Just take that out. It's got a little rubber o-ring on the screw. We can't see it anyways, but believe me it does. And then I imagine I could fill it like a K-Fun. I'm gonna just put the drip bottle upside down and into the hole and fill it up. And yep, it seems to be going good. Now in case I don't know how much this holds, I think I heard somewhere with the bigger chimney on this newest version it holds three and a half mil whatever I put in there is gonna be good enough just in case it's leaking and that's on Drip tip in air bubbles coming up hopefully it's not draining it's not leaking yet anyways over here, gurgle. So, that's pretty good. Have this open all the way, and can't get it closed. There, yeah, it's pretty adjustable on this. It's got air holes on both sides. And I'll close it off a little bit. Yeah, I can taste that a lot better than the Pro Tank. That is really airy though. Those holes are big. I'm gonna close that off even more. Now, vapor production seems pretty good. I do melt to lung hits. That's me. That's good. It's pretty good. That was a long hit. And I think this might be a tank where that's where it shines. Because that was a lot more vapor. I kind of double hit when I milked a lung, but I think this is going to be better for lung hits. I mean, it's good. It creates a lot of vapor. It's not really dense. I'm going to do one lung hit wide open. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, I'm going to have to play with it a bit more, but as far as long hits go, it's a lot of vapor, like a lot of vapor. There's some nice air bubbles, they go real slow up, oh, I missed that. Actually there, that's pretty good too, actually I think I did find a sweet spot for that airflow, it's almost all the way closed, but it seems good for mouth to lung. Anyways, yeah, the reason I was talking about the slow air bubbles going up is because there's so little space between the glass and the chimney that it's really tight. I was worried about it wicking. I read a review that a uh, person was complaining that it wasn't working, and then all of a sudden I didn't want to buy this. And I was thinking maybe it was because of that, but then I found out his was just faulty. Yeah, you know, that's pretty good. It's good. I may have to tweak it a little bit, but 
I still like my K-Fonds. This is a K-Fon Lite, and it's just color tube on Nemesis. See, and even that, that produces, this is only about a one ohm coil as well. And it works really good. Um, I can't think of much else to say. Gordon kind of, he kind of uh, wanted to, uh, well, he wants to know if I did this. So, yep, Gordon, I did it. Uh, if you want to check out Gordon's channel, he's a vaping newbie. If you look up those videos, you should be able to find them. Newbie, N-E-W-B-I-E. And he's got a bunch of really good videos. And I don't know if I'm going to make any more videos, but for now, I've made one. And, well, that's about it for the Fogger V4. I'm running up to 20 minutes, and i got to cut it off. It's way longer than I expected. Anyways, take care. Happy vaping. I don't know. I'll come up with a slogan, possibly an intro at some point if I keep doing them. But for now, this is just it. And, all right, take it easy.